Luroy's Pokemon Crystal Walkthrough, Part 31. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Pokemon Crystal version. In the last video, we left Blackthorn City because there was nothing to do there and the gym was blocked. So we still have to defeat Team Rocket at the radio tower in order to get into the 8th gym. But I'm going to continue to put that off for a little bit longer in this video, so let's hop on our bike. Um, I just have a little bit of cleanup to do. Um, in the routes next to Ecruteak City. So let's start with Route 38, where we have a Thunderstone waiting for us. And this will cap off the collection of evolutionary stones you can get from random trainers throughout the Johto region. So we got the Leaf Stone, the Fire Stone, the Water Stone, and now the Thunderstone. This will evolve Pikachu into Raichu and Eevee into Jolteon. Nothing new in Gen 2, which is kind of disappointing. Now let's go ahead and delete last Dana from our Poke Gear. I never want her calling me again. Half the time it's just a bunch of nonsense. So yeah, let's kick her out of here. Um, and this will be nice. We'll no longer have random trainers bugging us all the time. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for that stuff over there on Route 38. And we have one more thing to do on the south side of Ecruteak City. Um, kind of goes hand in hand with the Thunderstone, I guess. So... Yeah, make sure you're playing on a Sunday for this. I forgot about it originally, but I'm barely squeezing this in here on a Sunday night. So let's talk to Sunny right here. Um, hi, I'm Sunny of Sunday, meaning it's Sunday today. I was told to give this to you if I saw you. Um, so apparently someone's been, they've been talking about me all these uh, days of the week siblings or whatever. So this one, uh, this time you're going to get the magnet. The magnet boosts up your electric type moves by 10%. That's why I said it goes hand in hand with the Thunderstone. Um, and yeah, I forgot about this originally. Um, I didn't even know I was using an Elicate on my team when I first went through here, so... Yeah, now I have an Elicate on my team, so I'll for sure give him the Magnet, and that will be great. So, yeah, that's gonna do it for this little section, and now our um, time has finally come. We gotta go to Goldenrod, and we gotta go into the Radio Tower. So, I will see you guys on the other side. What's going on, everybody? It's- Oh, we already did the intro. Okay, well, I wouldn't have known. It's already tomorrow. I waited a whole nother day to do this freaking Radio Tower business, but yeah, I just left the Mart where I was selling off items and stuff. God forbid I run out of bag space in here. Um, let's talk to this person. Normally, you can talk to these people and you can play a little lottery game with your trainer ID, but you can't do it while Team Rocket took over the place. So, we gotta defeat these guys. Yeah, let's get to it. We've finally taken over the radio tower. Now everyone will get to experience the true terror of Team Rocket. We'll show you how scary we are. Yeah, they took over the radio tower. So if you have the radio playing on your Poke Gear or whatever, you're gonna see that now Team Rocket's uh, broadcasting their propaganda or whatever they're doing on there. So yeah, now we gotta stop them. Um, I don't really care that they've taken over the radio tower. I just want to get my 8th gym badge, and the game's not going to let me move on until I do this crap, so... We gotta go fight about 25 Team Rocket grunts. We gotta go up the radio tower, then we gotta go to the underground basement. It's a whole ordeal. And there's a reason people absolutely hate this part of the game, but, uh... Yeah, that's why I've been putting it off for so long, but we're finally going to get through it today, and it's honestly going to take several videos, so not just today, but... Yeah, whatever. We got a couple Raticates to start off. Not too bad. We'll Fire Blast the hell out of them. Um, and yeah, we'll... I actually gotta be cautious because I'm gonna run out of Fire Blast pretty quickly in here if I, uh... Just stick to Quilava. Although I do have plenty of Elixirs and stuff to boost up my power points, so I guess I'm not really too worried about it. Too strong! We must watch you! Yeah, you guys better watch out! About to take this place down solo! Uh, let's go up to the second floor. Some innocent bystanders over here. Someone should tell these people they can leave. Like, just go home. Um, anyways, we got another trainer here. Ha 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 ha! How boring it was! Far too easy to take over this place. Come on, keep me amused! Yeah, that sounds like what I'm gonna be saying when I'm walking out of this place. Wow, so easy to take over! Um, so we got another rocket grunt, you guessed it! And she's got one Pokemon, just an Arbok, so... Um, we've got Quilava up front, let's go with another Fire Blast then. So yeah, this is kind of an annoying stretch for, uh, Hot Sauce, and I missed with the Fire Blast there, that'll happen. Um, go right back to it though. This is an annoying stretch because, um, Croconaw evolves into Feraligator at level 30, and Bayleaf evolves into Meganium at level 32. Quilava doesn't evolve until level 36, kind of gets the Shaft. Um, although at level 31 you learn Flame Wheel, which is pretty nice to kind of bridge the gap, especially if you didn't get Fire Blast, you'll be desperate for Flame Wheel. 
Um, but I'll use it as a secondary kind of move. I'll get rid of Ember, I don't need both of them. So yeah, it'll be nice. I'll have... Fire Blast is twice as powerful as Flame Wheel, um, but Flame Wheel has, you know, the 100% accuracy, so it's good to have both of them. And when you're fully evolved into a Typhlosion, you can even upgrade that to Fire Punch if you want. Um, so let's actually go ahead and give Quilava a break, though. Give someone else a chance to shine in here. So let's go over to uh, Umbreon. Yeah, I want to go over to Umbreon to get some of these easier um, trainer wins here. So let's go ahead and take on the next Team Rocket Grunt. Yeah, Umbreon is kind of my weakest attacker, so... Um, it's good to save him for some of these easy trainers like this guy here who has just like a crap load of Rattata on his team. Um, I circled a few guys that were just like super easy trainers. And it's an interesting case with Umbreon that, you know, he's my weakest offensive Pokemon, but I think in the long run, he could end up being one of my most valuable Pokemon in some of the major battles. So um, all he has to do is, you know, stay up to par with the levels. Even though it takes him a little bit longer to knock guys out, as long as I keep him chugging along there, um, same level as the rest of the team. I think he's gonna square up to be one of the best on my team just given his insanely high defense, special defense, HP. So yeah, pretty excited about it. And yeah, these Rattatas are easy pickings for him. So it would be easy to just get carried away with Quilava and just sweep this entire radio tower. But I gotta remember to get Cosmo um, some experience along the way. So yeah, these guys are easy enough. Anytime I have really easy Pokemon, I'll probably turn to Cosmo. Um, just so I don't have to waste my time with two and three hit KOs throughout the game. So yeah, just guy's got five freaking Rattata on his team. Don't know what his deal is. And they could all be Raticates as well. But no, he preferred five Rattata. If he had five Raticate, he'd probably be like a Team Rocket executive for crying out loud. But nope, he just wanted five Rattata. I don't know why the Team Rockets like refuse to have diversity on their teams either. It's just like Rattata, Zubat, Grimer, Coughing. And that's it, nothing else. Like, I don't know, of course there's some variation, but for the most part, these guys just use the same old crap that nobody else wants to use in this game. Um, that was the most pathetic critical hit I've ever seen from that Rattata. Um, another return there. And I think that was the last one, so not quite up to level 31, um, but we defeated him. So yeah, can we get a clean up on the second floor of the radio tower? I've got like five dead rats. Um, let's go ahead and move on. We got another easy trainer here. Um, should be perfect to get Umbreon up to that next level. So, yeah, uh, the second floor here is loaded up with Team Rocket Grunts. They're here to make absolute sure no one gets up to the third floor. Um, he's got a Zubat, though. Yeah, a couple easy Pokemon for Cosmo here. And I've actually used Return so many times, I'm sick of it. Let's go with a Shadow Ball instead, because... Um, I, I uh, got that, what did Shuma call it, item, the spell tag in the last episode, and that's gonna boost up my ghost type moves a little bit, so not bad. Still not as powerful as Return, but kind of a nice alternative. Um, yeah, Zubats, uh, two Zubats, very original. Um, yeah, this guy fits the mold perfectly of the Team Rocket. If you start the game as a Team Rocket, it's instead of like the fire type, water type, and grass type, you just get like Zubat, Coughing, or Grimer. Which one's it gonna be? Um, and then you can go catch all the rats how you want on the first route of the game. Oh, what a life it must be as a Team Rocket grunt. Three years ago, Team Rocket was forced to disband. Oh, are you referring to the time that 10-year-old kid completely flipped your organization upside down, defeating every single one of your organized crime members one by one, including the leader Giovanni three times in a row? The time the one dude from Kanto that could walk more than 10 steps busted into all of your secret bases and defeated every single one of your Team Rocket grunts? Yeah, when they were forced to disband, that's one way to put it. Um, so let's go ahead and knock out this Grimer with a return, and that should hopefully get the job done. Um, oh, he's gonna live by a little bit. Grimer does have actually excellent HP, so not too big of a surprise. Um, he is pretty annoying there with Sludge, so luckily we didn't get poisoned or anything. If you have Ground or Psychic types, those are gonna be excellent because you start to see a lot of Grimers and Coughings in here, and they will get your guys poisoned sooner or later. So I'm actually gonna switch out over to, let's go to Ursaring, something that can get a nice easy one-hit KO, because Grimer's, um, Notorious for sludging you and stuff. Um, so yeah, let's go back to uh, Ursaring and... Ooh, look at that! I left myself a nice little surprise. He's almost up a level, so... Nice. And yeah, Roosevelt, no question he's gonna get the one-hit KO. It's the hardest-hitting guy on my team right now. So... 
almost gonna get me up to level 3. I mean, how many more experience points do I need? Just one more experience point to get up a level? But I'll definitely stay in for Muck. Muck is one of the best special defensive Pokemon in the game, so... A physical attack is by far gonna be your best bet. Even like a Psy Beam is probably not gonna knock this thing out. That's how good of a special defense it has. But a return getting a one-hit KO is awesome on Muck there. Um, those things are definitely pretty bulky. So there we go, we defeated Rocket Grunt, and yeah, it was actually kind of nice to fight a Muck there. Better than your average crap we've been seeing in here, so... Let's go up to the next floor and take on this guy. I've been given strict orders, I'm to crush anyone who challenges Team Rocket. Uh-oh, this guy's got strict orders, they ain't messing around here on the third floor of the radio tower. So, Rocket Grunt wants to battle, he's got a coughing. Okay, so, um, nothing too exciting here. Um, you'll want to use special attackers against coughing, but I can probably still get a two-hit KO. It's only at level 23, so I'm not going to worry too much about the stats and stuff. Um, yeah, two-hit KO. Holy smokes, it's self-destruct! Oh, I forgot that all these coughings have self-destruct on them, so that's going to do a bunch of damage. Um, well, not a bunch, I guess, but a, a bunch for a level 23 coughing on a level 31 Umbreon, that's for sure. Um, I'll hang around for Zubat, though, because I'm not worried about Zubat. Um, but yeah, wow, self-destruct caught me off guard there for a sec. So be sure to be careful against those guys. You might want to use special attackers to try to knock them out in one hit, um, instead of physical attacks, but... Yeah, Zubat's gonna go down very easily, and what do we got next? Um, Grimer, so... Even though I'm at 42 hit points, I should be fine here. It'll take several more hits to actually knock me out, and I'm not anticipating another self-destruct or anything, so... Let's go with the return, and see if we can knock this Grimer out in one hit. Um, ooh, not quite, but that's okay. He's gonna use Minimize to... Crap, I hate this move. If I start missing, this is gonna be awful. That's gonna boost up his evasion. Um, Alright, cool, we're still gonna hit him. So yeah, Minimize, kind of the same type of thing as Sand Attack. Instead of lowering your accuracy, it boosts their evasion. Um, and, of course, we have a Rattatata around things out. He wouldn't be a freaking Team Rocket Grunt if he didn't have one, so... Um, yeah, Return should be a one-hit KO. Um, alright, yeah, and then, yeah, we're here on the third floor, we gotta get up to the fifth floor to finish this thing, so hopefully we can do that in this video. Um, Team Rocket Grunt defeated. What?! He can't believe it! Yeah, you had strict orders, man! You're gonna get fired! Um, okay, so Umbreon got hit with that self-destruct. I don't want there to be any surprises, so let's go ahead and switch out. And let's go back to Hot Sauce. I got both of these guys up to level 31, so we'll keep tag-teaming along here. Um, and I got Ursaring up a levels, too, as well, too. Um, it feels great ordering Pokemon to commit crimes. Ordering Pokemon to commit crimes? And what crimes could these possibly be? You guys like raiding kitchens with your Rattata or something? Oh boy, who knows. Um, oh, this guy's got a Weezing on his team. Nice. Yeah, you can commit some serious crimes with Weezing. Uh, like smoking indoors. I don't know. Is that a crime? Is every law that you break a crime? I don't know. I didn't go to law school. But we're going to use a Fire Blast on this Weezing. Hopefully get a one-hit KO on it. Um, definitely want to stick to special attacks with this guy, but yeah, nice to get a one-hit KO on a Weezing, that is pretty tough. Um, so yeah, there we go. Quick battle. You're kidding! Yeah, that's what the bosses are probably gonna say when they see that the same kid worked his way up to the very top, defeating every single Team Rocket Grunt. Um, here's a scientist. There's always one scientist tagging along with the Team Rocket Grunts. Um, who are you? An unknown child. I don't get how these people don't know who I am yet. Shouldn't there be pictures of me, like, all around, like, stop this guy, stop Leroy, whenever he comes in. Um, anyways, here's Scientist Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, he's got a Magnemite on his team, so yeah, let's, uh, go to our Flame Wheel. We don't need to rely on Fire Blast when we got a super effective Flame Wheel, so... Yeah, Flame Wheel is a necessary upgrade over Ember. It sucks that you have to wait till level 31. Um, it's all the more reason to get Fire Blast on your Quilava. When you look at how early Chikorita gets Razor Leaf and, you know, Totodile can get Surf really early on, it just, there's no reason to wait till level 31 for a decent Fire type move, so do yourself a favor, um, save up for Fire Blast. Um, Flame Wheel's kinda handy to have though on the side. So yeah, these Magnemites are no problem. Um, just, there's always just, <laughs> I just think it's so funny, always a couple of scientists hanging around with these Team Rockets everywhere they go. Like, they're not committed Team Rocket members, but maybe they're like scientists for hire, like on the side. I, I don't know. It's, I just imagine the Team Rocket executives have a big map of the radio tower. They're like, we'll put two grunts here, one in front of the door, then two back here, and you know what? 
We're gonna need a scientist. We can't pull this off without a scientist. Call scientist Mark. Get him over here. Oh, hi, Mark. Um, so yeah, this is the one scientist that's always tagging along. That's gonna get me up to level 32, which means if I had chosen either of the other starters, I would be looking at the final evolution right now. Uh, but that's okay, level 36 is kind of the standard. I don't know why they evolved the other ones so early in this game. Now if you come over here, you're actually gonna need a key to get onto this other side, so don't worry about it. If you talk to the lady in the green hair, she's gonna tell you that the Team Rocket boss has locked himself in, but the director can open it. He's up on the fifth floor. Please save him! So right now we're on the third floor, we gotta continue our way up to the fifth floor. So, um, let's check the squad here. I think I can probably... Let's go to Blackout, my Elekid, who's still only at level 30. Don't want to forget about Elekid, so... Yeah, let's hopefully use him to take out the fourth floor here. Uh, starting with this guy. You plan to rescue the director? Yeah, how'd you know about my plans? I just figured that out a second ago. Maybe he heard me coming up from the stairs talking to the green-haired lady. Um, who, by the way, there's all these innocent bystanders throughout the radio tower just... It's not like they're tied up or anything, they're all just hanging out here, like, are these guys really in danger right now? Um, so we've got Elekid who's gonna smash this thing with a thunder punch. We also have the magnet attached to him to boost up his electric type moves even more. Um, nice, we got a critical hit, cool. And, uh, 253, yeah, we're just getting some little bits of experience racked up here. Uh, Grimer, we'll stick around for Grimer. Can't imagine that'll give us any issues. Um, Thunder Punch. Yeah, let's go. So, he's mainly a Thunder Puncher. Ice Punch is gonna be very helpful for the upcoming gym. I'm hoping Elekid can be a big contributor in there. And I can even throw the Never Melt Ice on him to boost up his Ice-type moves. So I can kind of go back and forth there with the Magnet, the Never Melt Ice, which is kind of handy. Um, and what is the last one? Oh, it's a Golbat! Nice! Perfect for Elekid. And actually, Elekid first got action in the, uh, Mahogany uh, Team Rocket Headquarters. If you remember, I had the, um, whatchamacallit, experience share on Elekid all throughout the Team Rocket Headquarters there. Then he, I finally let him out and let him go into battle against that Murkrow. And now he's all grown up here at level 31, um, all ready to evolve into an Electabuzz. Uh, but I'm still not ready to evolve him. Um, still need Blackout to prove himself a little bit more for the team, so we'll go ahead and press B. We'll be the hypocrites since I criticize everyone else for not evolving their Pokemon, but whatever. Um, we got one more scientist in here. Most excellent. This radio tower will fulfill our grand design. Yeah, shut up, freaking science nerd. Um, so yeah, the second scientist here in the radio tower. And the last guy we gotta fight before going up to the fifth floor. So here we go. This guy's got a Porygon. Pretty cool. Not something you see every day. Kind of a funky, normal-type Pokemon. Might take a few of these Thunder Punches, because it's actually a pretty good defensive Pokemon. Um, let's see what move he's gonna use. Conversion! That would have changed his type into one of my move typings. Um, but it failed for whatever reason. Another Thunder Punch. And... I guess he's gonna go with Conversion 2 now! So that's gonna turn him into a Ground-type, actually. Since I just used an Electric, it's gonna go with something that resists it. So, Ice Punch for the kill. Um, can be kind of tricky, um, but yeah, so, conversion, conversion to basically just gimmicky moves that can change Porygon's typing. And it's kind of just a gimmicky Pokemon. I do like Porygon Z a lot, though. Um, so yeah, once you defeat the scientist who's the last line of defense, we can make our way up to the very top, the fifth floor here. Um, so... Let's see, it's the... Oh, there he is! It's the executive! You! You came to rescue me! That's right, I'm here! Is that what you were expecting? Wrong! I'm an imposter! Oh no, we were tricked! I pretended to be the real guy all along! So yeah, apparently this guy has disguised himself as the director. He's not gonna tell us where the real director is unless we defeat him in battle, so... Yeah, that's what we're doing up here, all the way to the fifth floor just to fight the imposter. It's the Rocket Executive, and this guy has six Pokemon on his team. Ugh, six Pokemon, it's gonna be a long one, it's gonna be a doozy. Five of them are coughing, so... Yeah, these guys are at level 30, quite annoying to deal with. Um, stick with special attacks, they're really good defensively. Um, but yeah, these guys know Smokescreen, they will use Self-Destruct. Um, just very annoying to deal with, so... If you don't have Psychic or Ground, Ground is the only physical attack you want to be using, by the way. Other than that, just go with Electric or Water, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, and I don't want to deal with that Smokescreen Accuracy drop for um, a single coughing, so let's switch out of here. Let's go back to Hot Sauce, who 
He's doing a pretty good job. I actually still have a few Fire Blasts left on him, and coughing level 30 is a pretty high level, so, um, I mean, it's not that high of a level, but compared to the, most of the stuff we're seeing, so I'll go with the Fire Blast. I think coughing's probably good enough to live a Flame Wheel, so... Um, yeah, hopefully we can finish this guy off. I know I'm running out of Fire Blast, but whatever. These coughings are really, you know, they'll try to self-destruct. They'll try to lower your accuracy. As long as you stick with a good special attacker, you should be all right. Um, but yeah, kind of annoying. It could be your worst nightmare if you don't have a very diverse team. Um, and he even has one wheezing on his team at an even higher level, so... Um, it's not just coughings you gotta deal with. Um, so yeah, we're getting pretty good here with our Fire Blast. I guess we did miss on the very first one of the video, but we've been perfect since then. And next up is the Weezing, so actually probably perfect that I held on to at least one of my Fire Blasts for this guy. Let's hope we don't miss with it. Um, yeah, Weezing. This guy's at level 32. Pretty tough to deal with, so... Yeah, whatever. I don't know how much more I can tell you to use special attacks on Weezing. I think you guys get the deal now. Um, and he's gonna use Tackle. See, that's the thing, these freaking executives, they have decent Pokemon every once in a while, but they still just use Tackle. Like, this guy finally gets a chance to pull off a move. He goes with Tackle. Um, yeah, the AI is pretty crappy in this game. Also, just their movesets are crappy, but, um, that's just a Gen 2 problem in general. Um, okay, so yeah, back to the coughing. And, boy, we're, this video's been going on a long time, just to get up to the freaking fifth floor of this place. Um, I gotta go back to Flame Wheel. Um, but yeah, hopefully this will probably wrap up the video, finish off with this guy, then we can go to the underground next time around. And, oh, I got a critical hit! Well, I still don't know if it would have been a one-hit KO. And now I'm at level 33, so maybe I never will know if it was a one-hit KO at level 32. Um, okay, one last coughing. Jeez, this battle is very rough. A good thing I have the tools to take him out, but... I can imagine this would be a tough one if you're just, like, trying to run through with a Chikorita or something. Um, all right, Flame Wheel. Oh, and he's barely gonna live. Well, I guess I was right. I did need the Fire Blast on him, so. He's gonna get me with another Tackle, his favorite move. Um, so yeah, we'll finish him off with that last little sliver of HP. And yeah, Hot Sauce did pretty great. Oh, and you're gonna give me the critical hit when I don't need it there. Ah, whatever. I guess I got the critical hit on the last one, so whatever. Um, okay, cool. And that's gonna do it. Okay, okay, I'll tell you where he is! Yeah, you could have just never told me where he was too, but we stashed the real director in the underground warehouse! Okay, cool, thanks for telling me. It's at the far end of the underground. He's even getting specific about it now. Um, and he's gonna give me the basement key! I didn't even ask for the basement key, but he's giving me everything I need to go find the real director. Um, cool, so... Yeah, this guy could have 100% just been like, I'm never gonna tell you, and then just like, use an escape rope or something. But no, he literally just hands you the basement key. I mean, these guys just suck. Sometimes I even wonder whose side they're on, but... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get out of this place. Um, I don't know if these, if you still have to fight these trainers afterwards if you skip them. Um, you probably do, because there's still the card key slot over here. So yeah, the basement key doesn't get you all the way through yet. We still need to get the card key in the basement. Yeah, and you wonder why people freaking hate this portion of the game. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and next time we're gonna be going to the underground to continue taking on Team Rocket Grunts. Oh, hi, Mark.